Well, John's on a mission to try and get all of the old tape scraped off the Monte Carlo windshield before we move that out. And I'm on a mission to get these done so that they can get off my mobile welding table because I want to work on a different project, something more fun. Today we're going to work on getting these stupid bearings put in. As you can see, this one is rusted entirely solid. And this one here was rusted, and you can clearly hear that it's got grit in the bearing. John, stop for just a sec. Let's see if we can hear this on camera. So, I'll up the volume if need be so you guys hear that grinding noise, because these should not be grinding. You should not hear anything on them as they turn. As you can see here, I'm spinning it on my finger, nice and quiet. Before we get too far into this video, I want to point out that there's going to be people that say to take a 14 millimeter socket, put it on the end of an extension, and drive the bearings through. This method does work if your bearings explode like these did. The reason why I don't rate outright say to use this method is because as this comes down onto this, it impacts down in and it can actually wedge the rollers into the sides of the case in the bottom. So this method will work, but do keep in mind there is a chance that it'll wedge and then you have to take a saber saw and slice the edge of it to be able to finish pushing it out. We've got ourselves set up on sawhorses about six inches apart. We've picked up our bearings. I'll post a link for these along with the snap ring pliers that I prefer to use for this. These are actually cheaper to buy in a pack of five than they are to buy in a pack of two. We're gonna flip this over to start with in order to get our ring off the bottom of this gear. John, can you zoom in on the gear here? So we're going to pull this apart. And if your input shaft is as rusted as this is, this is going to be wedged and you're gonna to have to fight with it to get it out of there. It really should just slip out easily, but if it's rusted in, it will be a bear to get out. There we go. So now, if we set that aside, whoops, set that aside on the workbench. We pull the gear out so that you guys can see what's going on. You really don't have to pull the gear out. You can just punch the center. But I want you guys to see exactly how the washers are underneath here. So they use one washer that sits inside the edge of the gear. And then they use a rotating washer that sits against the bottom. So you need to make sure these go in in this order when you reassemble. So now if John backs out, in order to punch the bearings out, you're gonna need a screwdriver cut off to be flat. We're gonna set this on the end of this and give it a tap. And that just started to slide on its own. So we're gonna pull that right out. So there is that assembly. And this is what I was talking about, about rust. The rust builds up right in here and it presses in on the clip in the bottom of the gear and it will actually wedge it so it will not turn. So we'll clean this up on the wheel in just a little bit. So now if I lift this up, John is going to be able to see that there's a bearing here and there's a bearing down in there. And what you've got to do is take your cutoff screwdriver and you've got to tap back and forth on this bearing in the bottom. So this bearing comes out this way, the other bearing goes out the top. So it's just plain a giant pain in the tuchus to do. And a lot of people don't like making videos where they show themselves struggling. Especially since the comment section is going to be filled with people saying, Oh, I did that myself. 
and it only took me five minutes because I have such and such blah 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 tool that supposedly makes it all easier and okay Bob good for you There we go. So there goes the inside one. Because now we can hold this up against the edge and hopefully get a better hit on it. It just is not. It just is not playing fair. It is moving though. We can see that we have gotten the edge to move just a little bit. So let's go ahead and try it some more. And again, the big problem here is you got to hold you got to hold against the outside edge kind of angular. No, can't get onto it there. Ouch. That was my finger. And John, can you look underneath and see if you can actually visually see that? Whoop. There we go. Did you see it as it came out? I don't know. You don't know? When it fell. Yeah, so this was some sort of rubber seal that is long since petrified that was in the top of that. Now I'm assuming you could probably figure out some sort of rubber O-ring to put in there or whatever, but we're not going to bother. We're just going to grab that and we're going to give it a tap 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 -a -roo. Back and forth. And we're going to flip it over. So if you grab an extension along with a half inch to three eighths adapter, it fits right on top of there to act as a tap in. And this has got to be in flush to the surface. There we go. Now if we set this in, we need to clean the rust out of the bottom of it, but as you can see, it spins, it's happy. So we just need to clean all the rust off the bottom of this and then put everything back together. Again, when you go to put it inside, it's going to be large washer and on the inside of this gear you're going to see that rides right there and some of these gears on older models are keyed so you have to make sure that washer sits down in the key there and then it goes on like that and then your snap ring goes on right there thank you everybody now john wants to work on the monte carlo some <laughs>